My name is uh, Neil Young. I'm a medical doctor. I'm chief of the hematology branch of the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute at NIH in Bethesda. I also direct uh, the Center for Human Immunology uh, at NIH. Dr. Young's lab is investigating an improved treatment protocol for aplastic anemia. I've actually been studying um, bone marrow failure since the 1970s, uh, mainly aplastic anemia, the sort of paradigmatic uh, type of bone marrow failure where the bone marrow is completely wiped out, a terrible disease. We've made really enormous progress in this disease, uh, first utilizing immunosuppressive therapy, uh, now standard regimens of horse antithymocyte globulin and cyclosporin, which have been effective in about two-thirds of patients, can be repeated, rescue more patients. Uh, but the new work that my colleague uh, Daniel Townsley is uh, presenting is the combination of traditional immunosuppressive therapy to treat bone marrow failure and a drug that appears to stimulate the hematopoietic stem cell. And that's resulted in markedly better response rates and a much higher blood counts than we've seen traditionally with immunosuppressive therapy. And we hope that that will translate into really sustained excellent survival in these uh, patients with aplastic anemia. We had done a study uh, a couple of years ago looking at a drug called l trombopag a thrombopoietin mimetic, a small molecule that stimulates uh, megakaryocytes to produce uh, platelets. And the, the study was done in patients with refractory disease, those patients who had not responded, usually to multiple courses of immunosuppressive therapy, with not a great expectation that it would be effective because we knew that thrombopoietin levels were very high in aplastic anemia. We were giving a drug that mimicked uh, TIPO. Um, and also because other hematopoietic growth factors uh, like granulocyte colony stimulating factor, erythropoietin, also very high levels in the patients weren't effective when we gave them at pharmacologic doses. But very surprisingly, almost half the patients with refractory disease responded. It was really, uh, really extraordinary. And not only did they respond with platelet improvements, but had even more dramatic improvements in hemoglobin and also in neutrophils. So it appeared that this was so-called trilineage hematopoietic recovery, suggesting that the stem cell was actually being stimulated. So the natural next step was to combine l, -L a drug that we think is actually directly on the bone marrow, with the immunological therapy that would lift this immune attack on marrow uh, stem and uh, progenitor cells. And that's the, that was the design of the current study that Danielle is reporting. We've now fully enrolled on this study. We have over 90 patients who have entered the study. Almost all of them have gone to the six-month uh, endpoint. And the results are really striking. Uh, so remember again that without immunosuppressive therapy, basically everybody died. It was really dismal. Uh, immunosuppressive therapy re um, allowed recovery in about two-thirds of patients, but with the addition of L-trombopag, the recovery, the hematologic response rate has re risen to uh, well above 80 percent um, and almost 90 percent at six months. That's in the cohort as a whole. Uh, the complete recovery rate, um, where blood counts are almost normal, has gone from 10 to 15 percent to 30 to 40 percent. The study was performed in three cohorts to test three different regimens uh, to combine l because we don't really know what the right way of using this drug in this disease is. And in the last, in the last cohort, where we've been able to introduce l the same day that we start our immunological therapy, the results are even better. And if they hold up, we may be looking at a 90 to 95 percent recovery rate and a better than 50 percent rate of uh, complete recovery in patients with aplastic anemia. That's extraordinary. I never thought we would really get to that, that point where we basically could say to patients that your chances of recovery are better than 90 percent. So it's, very, it's really very encouraging. It also has very, really extraordinary biological implications. So, you know, I've been studying this disease for many decades. I thought the stem cells were gone, but we obviously are seeing some activity on the part of stem cells. Um, that they are there, and we, we don't know where they're hiding, and um, we don't know exactly what their character is, but we seem to be able to stimulate them with essentially a little pill with very marginal toxicity. And one of the appeals of l pack is whether we can use that in combination with inexpensive uh, drugs in patients who now really have very few therapeutic options. 
Understanding um, how the drug works is important and figuring out the, the best regimen, the safest regimen, and the most effective regimen, th those are important things. That'll require more clinical studies that we're planning to do.